process, the bases are there, then of course you add the issues. Then of course a draft of 50, the 50 has to do with dissemination and follow up. So the good report that the UN has presented on Liberia, in what capacity or what context do we need to deal with it? First of all, the Liberian people need to know about it. Those are all working around the issue, you need to be very much open with the issue. You don't want to read Bible the wrong way, you can't put the scripture. So he might read Bible too, you gotta be familiar with the different treaties and the different issues in order to be discussed. So we said 10. 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You always see the, like 10, 10 days a basis for I work for you. I was in for here. I was in for here. Tent, I was in for here. So, ten were basically laid the basis, and this presentation actually going to be looking at three areas. That is uh, impunity and past human rights violation. Then, of course, state of emergency. And definition of terrorism, our extremely men and all the different group of people. And of course, I didn't make it so, you know, I didn't stress it so much because I had a lot of things to discuss. So the name remains the same. Adam K. Dempster, Secretary General of Civil Society, the independent human rights investigator, I'm a hero. So I needed to stay happy just so you can know that we start talking, I can spark you. I know how to spar. So if I say I will spar on you in the community, forget it, I'll give you a real story. So let us look at um, number 10 says the basics. That is the basis is that what the committee says. The, com the concern that the committee raised during that deliberation and then uh, putting it into a practical framework before they made the recommendations. So, Commissioner. Commissioner uh, John Stewart was trying to give a more, let's say, elaborate uh, explanation about the whole TRC process. We agree. But uh, again, let us see what the UN has said. It says, while, while welcoming the creation of a national Palawan health program at promoting and consolidating lasting peace and harmony through the country, the committee regrets. The committee regrets the very few steps taken to implement the bulk of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission recommendations of 2009. That is a committee over the period. There have been so much regret that La Russia have gone so much faster and further in addressing those recommendations that the TRC put out. So it became a basis for them to have made some good decisions on Liberia. It also added, the committee notes with concern that none of the alleged perpetrators of brush, human rights violations, and war crimes mentioned, <laughs> mentioned in the TRC report has been brought to justice. And to, to, to some of those individuals are or have been holding official executive position. It's just clear. All the people that were listed in the TRC report for gross human rights violation, they enjoy the best of society right now. Resources are not short for them. And onward, they are still enjoying those things. So the committee raised a concern about that. And of course, they also went to become more pacific about those who are in executive position. That you are part of the the, the, the rep, you're part of the Commission of Crimes, vigorous crimes in the country that constituted war crimes, crimes against humanity. But today you still find yourself in that position in government. So in any good civilized society, I mean, there should not be no kind of thing happening. So maybe it's around our corridor we have it kind of happen. So the committee actually took up the issue to be of great concern. So on the basis of these important points of committee, decided to give a recommendation. But the committee also noted with concern the absence of comprehensive program of reparation for victims. We have a lot of victims in Liberia, 
that today they have no definition. In the state of their victimhood, and in fact, most of them kind of like, I heard that some people even pass because prolonged in action, no action by government, frustration, psychological, and a lot of different means. Most of them have passed, but we still have a good number of them stay around. And uh, remember, some people have bodily injury, and uh, today you don't even have medical institutions to cater to some of them. Some people still have bullet wounds. So these are things that we lifted at the UN, and then they decided to give consideration to what we said. And it continues. The community concern. The community is concerned that such a situation fosters a climate of impunity. When you fail to give justice to the, 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 the victims of war, you fail to address the issue of reparation, all of these things, and then you reward those who are captured for grave human rights abuses and violations, you give them privileged position and worth, then of course, do we really want to give a justification that we are up for business in addressing the, 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 the efforts of war? These are things that they put based their argument. So they couldn't just come up with recommendations so strong because they got something against like Europe. That will have a mindset on what basis the committee decided to make recommendations. So these are important things that you can better interpret than the committee. So the committee did an investigation and saw these kind of, you know, unethical style of, you know, life to have based their recommendations. So we just wanted to give you the consent of the committee before we go to the recommendation. Human rights violations and war crimes that conforms to international standard. That is, hello. The committee is saying, based on her numerous concerns, they recommended that the state party, that is Liberia, Liberia should as a matter of priority, establish a process of accountability. There where you see the campaign for war crimes, war crimes, quote, war crimes, quote, it's about accountability. So people can account for their action. And but that process is not only a process that should just be a librarian driven process, but it should be in line with international standards. So, so you won't say, oh, because your small budget, it can be accommodated the, the four point something million, so you bring all kinds of difficult situations. No, the international community has worked with us, and they still want to work with us. So on an international human rights protection, the committee is saying that once you agree, accept, to implement these recommendations, and you include the international uh, standard, they force back on their lap to help you do those kind of things. So what I want from Liberia is commitment. Yeah, that we are willing to do this. We are willing to go about it. So the ball is in our court. The government should be able to react or respond to this matter. And of course, the committee was also quick to uh, speak about including independent and expertise of the judiciary, victim access to justice, due process and fair trial guarantees and witness protection. And they are telling us that if those who are recommended to be prosecuted, if found guilty, if found guilty, convicted and punished in accordance with, with the gravity of the acts committed, they use strong words of the gravity, that means they added weight to it. The gravity of the acts committed, regardless of their status or any domestic, domestic legislation or immunity. That means we will just make sure that you have no cause that protect you. You cannot be uh, placed in a class different from the ordinary people. No matter how strong you are, how powerful you are, once you have been listed for these kind of crimes, we will rip you off and put you in a normal manhood, and then you go to answer questions. When you are free to worry, you can come back and wear your jacket, you become powerful again. 
So we gather of special immunity, this kind of issue, you can't do this, no. So we are looking at the process with fairness. We are looking at it with a level of transparency. We are not going to give particular status to a, a group of people or a special class of people. The whole thing about justice is about using Mona Lisa. She tied her black cloth and she carried her, her, her justice chin in her hand. She didn't know nobody in the society. By the end of the day, justice will be set. Most of the treaties we put in require two years, after every two years. I will look at the Google uh, observation and say 11 years. 11 years is a very long period of time. So most of the time, we always behind the putting. And I'll give you an example, example of the African child or human human right. Uh, we, 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 we submitted our report 2012, almost 23, 24 years after we signed it. That was your main when I retreated. So we refer to it as consolidated report. That is bad. Because the essence of state reporting is for the international, for the citizen or for human rights, or civil society of the like yourself to be able to audit to provide alternative to what government is doing in, in keeping with their treaty of So it's very important. So what are you doing here? Your, your follow-up on the, on the conclusion of the vision of the, of the RCCPR is very important. It will help the, the government to, to improve. It also will help the Human Rights Commission because that's part of our mandate. So we cannot work without, without civil society on the vision. Because you have the expertise that we don't have as civil society on the most of you are research-based. Most of you work in different, different sectors that you know, we all can bring synergy to make sure that we provide sustainable human protection and promotion in Liberia. So I want to be very brief and say that I, I encourage you, and you know, I hope that all of us can take advantage of this, uh, this uh, formal meeting, and I'll be here tomorrow. And occasionally I'll be making some few comments. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a lawyer though, but I specialize in MRS law, that's why, that's why I take passion in doing it. And I've been doing that several times. Along with Emma, Bordeaux. Emma, you stay. I think I'm going to go see Emma do. I can call you. Emma Bordeaux, followed by. I And also. Sema. Sema Swari. And lastly. Janetta. As we were told earlier to do a working session on the concluding observation of the UNACR. And we are members of the two. And the issues we were told to talk about is the ICSR eight and nine recommendations. So having gone through what was said by the United Nations as it relates to the finding, we will come up with our recommendations. We are the one of the two came up with three short recommendations to foster the enhancement of the work of the ICSR. One, we talked about an increment in the budgetary allocation for the ICSR. Because having gone through what was said by the UN, they talked about the, the underfunding in terms of the ISIS, I will carry all their work. The budget allocation was very low. They didn't have enough money, so they none of that. They were doing the work, they had a problem. So we as the one we said, well, they should increase it because there are the already budget have been allocated, but then they should increase it because from what you have said, it's obvious that the money or what that was allocated was very small. I'm dead. Hello? Hi. Attention, Hi. please. Group three reporting on the CRC recommendation. Yeah. And uh, we are asked to say how can we, how can we, what's the strategy to implement the CRC recommendation? What we have here is to bring different stakeholders, bring different stakeholders. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. And explain the importance of the TRC implementation and get the buy in. Now, trust me, there is no doubt that the whole TRC, everybody just got their own take. Nobody knows the details and everything, everything, everything about it. So, everybody, I mean, I think there's a need for people to understand it very well before we can move forward and get the buy in. And then we say yeah to this. 
Amen. The description of the tax, where it takes to have the implementation, we must be able to explain the tax to implement the TRC and, and the benefit it has. The TRC, trust me, people who want it in the end will soon start crying and all like events. As soon as we push, 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 and then we have this TRC, let me put it in the simplest form, right? We have this TRC being implemented without fully explaining to people the pros and the cons. You will have people complaining. So we must be able to explain the benefits, what they can expect, right? And then another thing we said here, one way we could have one way we could have a why don't we just move on the other one of this thing? One way we could have the TRC presenting or one way we could have the TRC recommendation implemented is by using some case studies. We can do research and find out which other country has had. So what we said here, we were supposed to 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 say what's supposed to be done. How do we follow up on the recommendation that's supposed to be done by the by, by the, the human rights platform or the whatever they yeah from the how they call it. So this is these are our three uh, recommendations that we gave. We said one to be informed and a breath of human rights happiness in our society through monitoring. In order for the public to know what's going on. Everybody has to be informed. Everybody has to be abreast of human rights happening. What is it that is going on among the human rights? People just know things and they better do know the issues. So what we, what we are saying here is that people are supposed to know what's the happiness. And then monitoring should be done also. Then number two, we say to identify emerging human rights issues through community engagements to identify emerging human rights issues. We, we identify the problems, and then we'll be able to tackle it. Hmm? <laughs> community engagement, which means we, we go and engage the community and we'll be able to come up with the problems. We'll be able to identify the problems through community engagement. Number three, to engage relevant stakeholders for the implementation. You know, we're talking about tolerance. Anybody in our community can be used because they are innocent. Come on, put this five dollars and commit this crime. So we say we have to create a public awareness so that our people can be to know the importance of authority. Maybe you are taking it to be some kind of joking when I kill a person, there's no need to kill five persons, maybe anything. So we're talking about uh, stakeholders engagement constructively. We need to engage, we need to knock their door. Even when the ring is falling, we need to knock your door. Even when they tell us, no, we want to see you, we need to knock your door. We're talking about net, networking, partnership. And it's one of the important things for CSO. If you are in District 1 and are in District 2, you need to coordinate. Let us have one world engaging the community, engaging the, the stakeholder, more especially the government. Then we're talking about town hall meetings. Our people are in the rural area, they need to know. They are, and uh, I want us to be strong because uh, there are some areas in San that I'm working, no, no motorcycle, no car. I got to work for five, six hours because I want the people to get information, which I think we need to do. See, I'm just still responsible to provide accurate information based on facts. When we're talking about this accident took place, let's go there. I can remember during the one time I was the only person in the bombing that came out here, BC, all the general go for me to pull river, my man, why they do that? So that's why we try to bring out the system for you to understand what is all about you. You see the swap, and it tells you that all of us are equal before the law. So in the place that my right is violated, I should have place of redress in order to have the farmer applicable answer to my problem so that there can be a coexistence within the nation right and chaotic situation. 
Hence why we try to just project this like an arrow. Why, like, you will be asked to implement what they should be able to implement? Now, somebody asked the question, who cares about our plights? Civil society cares about the plight of the women, cares about the plight of those who are undergoing female genital mediation or people who should care on uh, um, free uh, abortion. Does the government care about us? So there's a question that the women are asking, there's a question that civil society actors are asking, and there's a question that the community is asking us. Now, what are some of the rights that we are entitled to? These are some of the rights you have right to uh, abortion, you have right to bodily integrity, and all of these things and everything. You have rights to that. You have come to those things. You have rights to that. You have rights to um, vote, you have rights to all of those things. Those are legal problems. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. What are some of what are some of those instruments that we look at? The United Nations Human Rights Chapter of Geneva it talks about they address this issue. We look at the Convention on Elimination of all forms of what discrimination against women. We look at the UN 1325. We look at the Mabutu Protocol. This is what most states that the the FGM group use in order to fight FGM and other areas in Liberia. Now, what are some of the tools that we use when it comes to female genital mediation? Why is the international community asking Liberia to, uh, to comply? It's due to some of these reasons. The people have understood that we carry on practices of such nature which cannot just be uh, uh, defended. We cannot defend it. We cannot. July 9, 2018, the government is on record to have said to the international community that they are on par. They are ensuring that female genital mutilation issue is being handled or looked at. So now, on January 19, 2018, the former president of Liberia passed what we call the Executive Order Number 92. And that Executive Order Number 92, it addresses the issue of female genital mutilation being abolished on the person below 18. Meaning that if the practice is done on the person below 18, the person who does the practice is, should be arrested and account for her act. Now, is that particular law enforced? No. How many of us as civil, civil society actors know about this law that we can hold government accountable for to or for? Few, few, few people know about it. What can we do is to create the awareness. So the international community will use that as one of our supporting documents to provide information to the international community. And because of that, that's why they are saying the government must. Because the government is also on record to have signed to the Mambudu Protocol. The Mambudu Protocol calls for elimination of female genital mutilation. They see that. They see that also call for what? the elimination of all forms of discrimination and harmful practices against women and children. So all of those things we are saying to it. So the government is saying, I mean the international body is saying we must. It's not a matter of choice. It's a matter of compulsion. So what are we to do? We struggle to put the government feet to the fire in order to ensure that they comply. So this why the recommendation is saying that government must comply and ensure that all of those things are done Legislation to criminalize all forms of our female genital mutilation with our exception. Do not say, the word with our exception. Female genital mutilation be done person below 80 criminalized, but above 80 is choice. No. It should be with all compulsion. I mean, uh, exception. Or take all mechanisms things to over, eradicate female genital mutilation after I say over. All of these things are to be done by government in order to ensure. That's why we show you the picture from up for you to see why the international community is asking the government to ensure that it's happy because of some of the practices. And what, what leaves my heart is, even our speaker, current speaker, Bofa Chimo and the, and the protein, coming on air, defending that female genital mutilation is not a culture, I mean, it's not what they call um, domestic violence. It bleeds my heart. It bleeds my heart because I asked him, and I, and I responded to him on, on one of the talk shows, I asked him and said, he needs to tell us, does he really understand what he was saying? Or he is misinformed. I use those words. Because female genital medicine starts from the womb. It starts from the womb. And I will speak to you how to attest to the fact that female genital medicine is done even in the houses. To those that represented us, we recorded uh, others because the, the they push our agenda. We are all lamb. Many times, Adam will say, say, my I say, my man, push this now. And they were able to do it. This why the recommendation came about. So, it behooves us, civil society items, as Mary said yesterday, we should not only look at World Crown Court. We should not only look at female genital mutilation. Those are all, these are all the issues, 26 list of issues that we need to really address. 
Like somebody said yesterday, the, the, the RNC, H.E. Aaron, needs to be pushed in order to ensure that this thing happens. When we push them, we will be able to push government. While we are pushing government for all angles, I believe we can be able to, to work, move ahead. <clears throat> yeah. Now, <clears throat> 26 to 27, we went on this particular issue. Like, you have a law that anyone that can on the act of abortion it is criminal in nature. So there is also a data of denial of women's rights, which accounts for larger structural inequalities. I'll also be looking at that. Um, let's see what our objective says. Next slide. So for non-discrimination, we'll explore various rights instruments, laws, both national and international, that protects and defends the rights of individuals belonging to certain group and those groups that go with stigmatization. Um, when you look at the disabled community today, even in Liberia, a lot of people see disabled people and say that it is a divine punishment that God places on them for cruelty of their deeds. People see people who are old and blind and think it is their fault. But most times what I wish is that those who have that mindset should, should get old and look like that. And let's see how it feels when people see you and think that it's a divine punishment because of your wickedness. Uh, the issue of people living with HIV and AIDS. Even though some of them are survivors of HIV and AIDS, but we still stigmatize them in our communities. We, we tend to exempt ourselves and say no. He should not drink from my cup. He should not even sit close to me. When he's sweating, his sweat should not rub with me. People who are Ebola survivors, we also discriminate against them. Um, people living with albinism, the albinos. How many albinos do we have in our destination? Of course, I haven't heard of one that has rained before. So for the issue of gender equality, we want to increase your understanding and awareness so that you'll be able to promote the, the, the political participation of women when it comes to gender equality. And we'll also be flagging a table that shows the percentage of women participation at the judiciary, women participation at the House of Legislature as well as the Senate, Women participation when it comes to city mayor, superintendent, and all the things. <coughs> the issue of gender-based violence, we want to also teach inter-participants, media women and community women leaders, methods and strategies on reporting and resisting abuses, violence and exploitation against women and girls, as well as strengthening the collaboration and cooperation of community residents and stakeholders in the fight of sexual and gender-based violence. If we look around us, it's no, no much of an extra strange to say, oh, I haven't heard of sexual, uh, sexual gender-based violence. It is prevalent in our communities. We have seen in that which Nema was talking about. But most of the time, what I always draw to the attention of my audience when I'm talking is the root cause. Colin saying that members of the civil society advocates the platform of Liberia due to conveyed in Kakata City Markey County, Liberia, on August 22nd to 23rd, 2018, under the subject Consultation on United Nations Human Rights Committee, concluding observation on Liberia, and whereas the CSO members recognize that the Recognize that the recommendations from the United Nations on human rights for Liberia to comply to are all of vital significance for the advancement of human rights uh, improvement in Liberia. Acknowledging that human rights violations are strongly prohibited globally and cognizant of the fact that human rights advancement is an entitlement for all of which all state parties are under obligations to ensure that all are fully protected and provided equal opportunities for empowerment, social services, and access to justice. Whereas, 
the overcrowdedness of persons, poor social services, compromising of GBV cases, improvement of the judicial system be handled appropriately by government to avoid culture of non-accountability. Whereas, an acknowledgement is given to the 9th and 10th July 2018 of the government of Liberia response to the 26th list of issues that came out of the Liberian government's report submitted in 2016 to the RCCPR. Whereas, members of the Civil Society Human Rights Advocacy Platform working with all relevant government ministries and agencies including general human and social protection, internal affairs, justice, and the National Traditional Council of Liberia, the Independent National Commission on Human Rights, the 54 legislature for the implementation of all recommendations in affirmative toward the sustainable development goals by 2030 globally, considering the theory leave no one behind as means as well as the constitution of Liberia. Now therefore be resolved among other things, CSOs shall engage government constructively through advocacy, awareness creation, and lobbying to help toward the implementations of all concluding observations. CSOs are divided as thematic areas to conduct a validation perception survey to understand public perception on the needs to harmonize both customary and statutory laws of Liberia to conform with international human rights theories, theories that Liberia has signed so as to avoid conflict and maintain the peace. Engage government of engage government for the legislation of harmonization of both laws. Then bring together all relevant stakeholders to further discuss the concluding observations from the United Nations recommendations to government that flagged the issues of the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the HTP, the Harmful Traditional Practices, People Living with Disability, etc. implementation. Called on the Ministry of Internal Affairs to end the insurance of licenses and permits to those and practitioners of the practice of female genital mediation. CSOs advocate for the inclusion of sexual reproductive health and rights awareness in schools curriculum and lobby for the budgetary increments of ministries of health and education. Therefore, we mem we participants to we participants do hereby affix our consent through the attachment of a attendance law from the two days consultative dialogue as affirmation to our commitment there to. Done on this 23rd day of August 2018 in the city of Kakata, Mankibi County, in the Republic of Liberia by CSOs. Thanks.